to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. My treasure, Lord, you are my friend. Anointed one, most holy. Because you're with me. Because you're with me. It's because. I will not fear because you're with me. Because you're with me. Because you're. I will not fear. You're opening your heart to me. My hiding place, my safe refuge, my treasure, Lord, you are. You're my friend. The Lord tonight wants to challenge our hearts. Believers must be guided to understand the things. We were having a very brief conversation this afternoon with two of my precious, precious mothers. And we were just talking about why it seems like the power and the glory of God um, doesn't seem to find expression to the degree to which we want it to be. And then especially for our generation, and we shared a number of things. Um, and it just occurred to me, and I've been, I've been drumming this, you know, in the past weeks to the body of Christ, that truth alone does not bless. Truth must be sequentially arranged. The communication of truth on its own will not bless you. But it must be arranged in a way and manner to form a body of knowledge that can give you specific results. But that's not where... Um, I'm going to, I, I brought the issue of our conversation to explain something. Now, please watch this. Did you know that God has vulnerabilities? Vulnerability means your propensity. Are we together? Your tendency. I can predict you based on your vulnerability. Are we together? 
there are people who are vulnerable to children. A vulnerability is not a weakness. Listen carefully. A vulnerability can be a weakness, but it is not a weakness. There are people who are vulnerable to children. That means if you want to get their attention, bring a child. Is that true? There are people who are vulnerable to pain. The moment they see pain, they are compelled to respond. Part of knowing God is to study his vulnerabilities. How do I get his attention? How do I isolate his attention from the worship of heaven? What must I do to make God direct his jealousy towards my life? There was only one man in scripture called a man after God's heart. What does it take to master the vulnerability of God? That means every time I do this, it's impossible for God to be silent. The Bible says the Lord is nigh them, all them that call upon him. Yes. But you see, you must master the things that you need to do to attract his attention. There are some of my people here, their vulnerabilities revolve around worship. Even if they are sleeping and they just hear a nice ad lib, something, they just wake up to confirm what they hear first. While some of us will be sleeping, quite honestly. There are some of you, your vulnerability is power. The moment you hear someone shout or falls down, it's impossible to not be in that service. You are alive. Some of us, our vulnerabilities revolve around beauty. The moment you see beauty, whether in nature, whether whatever it is, some of us have vulnerabilities around excellence. God has vulnerabilities. That means that there is a soft spot to God that a man can find. It becomes your advantage as far as attracting his attention is concerned. Are we together? It's very, very important. And so we were discussing and you see, worship was designed not only to bless you, not only to bless God, but as a system to know God's soft spot. There are songs and there are communications in worship that over time, you will gather songs like a ladder into the heart of God. You can know how to get God's attention in the time of tragedy. You know that not every song will get his attention. There is a song that you can raise when you are in pain. When you need emergency, there is something. There are times that English cannot sing that song. There are times that the vulnerability of God will only require instruments. No voice. And yet it is a song, it's a call. Are we together? I'm vulnerable to sacrifice as a person. I cannot see sacrifice and ignore it. The moment my love language is sacrifice. Not all those, I searched the list of all those love language things. I didn't find anything for myself. There, my, my love language is real, genuine sacrifice. It's impossible to see sacrifice and be silent. God has a love language. God has a system of attracting his attention. And part of spiritual growth is to master it. How do I get God to the scene? Ah, David. David, David will say, God, if you kill me now, who will worship you? You too, George. Think, use your intelligence to think. If you kill me and go like this, man, what do I do with him? What do I do with him? What do I do with him? Have you had your friend make noise as a class monitor? Now, you are supposed to write the names of noisemakers. But now a friend you are vulnerable to was the highest, the loudest noisemaker that day. And now your hands are tied. God's hand can be tied on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
that when judgment wants to come upon you, there is someone you can introduce that ties the hand of God. He says, why? Why? This principle was going to destroy you and then you brought a worshiper to the scene. And now God's hands are tied. And you are singing your loving kindness. You are good and your mercies endure forever. God was angry with the nation of Israel. And Moses told God, he cautioned God. Don't behave like this. You are God. Do you want them to say you brought them out? And now they didn't have the power. What is the difference between you and Ra? Read your Bible and God repented. There are people who it looks like God cannot be angry over. They have mastered him like a wife, her husband. When God is angry with your family, because of a violation of spiritual principles, you can come and tell him something. When we praise and worship God, we touch something about him that makes it impossible for him to act like nothing happened. Nothing happened. In Yoruba land here, we're in Yoruba land. There, is, there are these guys that beat drums for wealthy people. Have you seen them? A man is minding his business about to go home and they call his name. They start dancing and if he acts like he doesn't want to go, they now call his name. You are the one we are talking to. And dance around him and people start to cheer them. And before you know it, his hands, without consultation, will get to his pocket and he will bring out notes and spray them that worship puts pressure on his integrity when you call him the mighty man and he does not respond who else is who else is he has to defend his name that your song is singing so it's one of the technologies of the holy spirit listen when the holy ghost wants god to manifest as certain things he will put the song in your mouth that you will invoke that will cause God to respond in that dimension when the healing anointing wants to flow the spirit of God will move you to sing that dimension of him he will not come as a lifter when you sing him as a healer leave and find out that there are no battles again because while you were worshiping in your worship you called him a warrior in your worship you called him a lifter in your worship you said there was no other god like him so he will search for what in your life looks like a god and prove that there is no god like him hallelujah and he said why callest thou me good jesus is speaking now there is none good but one that is God. But if thou will enter into life, keep the commandments. Next verse. He said to him, which? Which one? The man is responding now. And Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Listen to his reply. The young man said unto him, All these, all these things I have kept from my youth. What lack I yet? What a wise man. I have kept these things, but I still do not see the results. I acknowledge there is something I lack. I've prayed. I've fasted. I was told when I pray and fast, power will come, but I did it. I've kept it. What do I lack? And Jesus said, listen, if thou will be perfect, go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor and then thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come and follow me <laughs> 22 but when the young man had that saying 
he went away sorrowful. Listen very carefully. Why? For he had many great possessions. Please stop there. Now, a young man comes to Jesus and says, Good master, I've heard you talk about eternal life. I've heard you talk about life and I desire to enter into that dimension. And then he said, what do I need to do? And Jesus gave him a set of instructions. And he said, no, if it's this, I have kept it. But I perceive that I lack something. And Jesus told him one thing that he lacked. He said, with all that you have done, there were only things that affected the external part of you. He says, go, sell your possession." If he said, keep the money, the man would do it. Sell your possession, then give away the entire money. When you are left with nothing, come back to me. And the man said, no, I can't follow you with nothing. Now, listen, 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 listen. He's telling him something here that is our message for tonight. Sell all, not some. He didn't say give all. Pay the price. Look for customers. Sell it. Gather the money. Place so much value on the money. Then give it away. And when you are empty and left with nothing, come and follow me. The Bible says the man left sorrowful. How do I start selling my reputation? How do I start selling my ambition? How do I start selling my track record? How do I start selling my gifts? I give them all away. When I'm left with nothing, I come to, what if I don't find you there? That's a risk. These are the support systems. My self-worth is predicated upon these things. Now you ask me to take away every support structure. When I am left without a system of support, I come. He says, that's the one thing you have lacked. This is the reason why you have not entered into life. You have done this. You have done that. But you've only done those things on the strength of a God called your possession. Because you have something to fall back on. Listen carefully. If God fails, you know your business will not fail. At least you will get customers. If he refuses to answer your prayer, your business can answer your prayer. While you find out why he's not answering. If God does not open a way, your gifts can open a way. So those support structures, he's speaking to a man. He says, there's one thing you lack. That all of these things you are doing, you have not yet come to a point of total surrender listen there is only one point i want to advertise tonight the price for all of god is all of you the price for all of god is all of you the price for all of god is not your mind it's not your seed the price for god everything that can be him within you must go the price for all of God. A young man who worked very diligently was not a thief, was not um, all of those sins. And then he comes to stand and says, good master, what is left? What have I not done? Good master, I'm a prayer warrior. Listen carefully. Good master, I'm a fasting giant. Good master, I'm a responsible gentleman. Good master, I'm a man of God. I heard that you called me and I, I, I have not rebelled at the call. But why are things not working? What one thing do I lack? How many things? One thing. One thing. And he told him, I know. I look at you and I see your degrees. I look at you and I see your business. I look at you and I see your gifts. And while it is true that you thank me in the midst of them, the proof that you can thank me is to thank me without them. It is easy to thank God in the midst of his faithfulness. But when you can thank him outside of his faithfulness, 
the, the, the purity of your worship, the purity of your pursuit is tested outside of everything that you have. It makes no sense to not love God when you are blessed. It makes no sense to not love God when things are working. But he says, go, take your possession. Now, if he said, give it away, you still have something to gain, a good name. So you still have something to protect. If, if I give this lady five naira, I give this one ten naira, even if I'm left with nothing, I secured a good reputation. But he says, go and sell it. So that the people who buy it know that it's not a gift. Then carry the money. Give to the poor who do not have a reputation to advertise you. And then when you are left alone feeling stupid, come to me. That is the one thing you have learned. Please hear me believers. There is one thing that our generation continues to lack. The truth is that God has helped us in the area of prayer, in the area of the word there. There's gradually been a sense of seriousness with God, an awakening. And so we love God in the midst of all of this. But we must get to a point where we allow him to test our love when we are left alone. Let me see your worship when you lose your job. Not when you don't have a job. When you don't have a job, you don't have an experience upon which your ego is resting on. But when you lose it, see, it is better to not have something. That innocence, you are innocent. But when you have it, you have added it to your support structures. And God says, lose it. That in this kingdom, we gain things by losing them. That anything you do not lose is not truly yours. The condition to have things is to lose them. You gain a reputation by losing it. You make a name by becoming of no reputation. Look at what, Je understand what Jesus is telling him here. He's saying your confidence, rich man, is not, you are a good man. But I see that there is one thing you lack. I look at you and there are strings connected to your wealth, connected to your abundance, connected to everything. Cut those strings away and stand alone, willing to love me, willing to serve me, whether or not. You see, let me tell you this. There is no disappointment when there is no expectation. Disappointment only comes when there is an expectation that has not been met. I don't expect this guy to hold my mic for me. So if I pass him and he does not hold, I'm not disappointed. But if I expect you to hold my mic and you don't, are we together now? While it is true that God blesses, listen please, listen please. True love can never be a reward. If I love God because... If I love God for, if I love God towards, the moment there is a condition, that is not true love. True love can never be a reward. Because whatever is the object, the defining factor, it can fail. I love God because he prospers. Dangerous reason to love God. I love God because he anoints. I love God because he never fails. They look spiritual, but they are dangerous reasons. If you love me because you like my smile, what happens the day I'm angry? Are, are you seeing that now? You're already in trouble because the love was tied to something. So he says, cut those strings away. It is good to celebrate him and say, Lord, look at what you have done in my life. But you should be able to say, Lord, look at what you have not done. And yet I love you in the midst of it. Go and sell everything that you have. Sell your reputation. Notice how God made men in the Bible. 
every time he came to them he always will ask them to do something that left them alone take now thy son thine only son whom thou lovest only son the one you love forget ishmael you don't love him take the one you love go and offer him upon a mount that i will show you and abraham became the father of faith when jesus himself was going to come to the earth the father said if you must come and die strip yourself of the glory you are not going to come with it you will come and learn obedience because you want to gain a name so you must lose something please understand what i'm teaching you tonight i show you the reason why many people never secure the attention of god i show you the reason why many spiritual activities will continue to be a compendium of frustration I show you why we dissipate spiritual energy in supposed spiritual things and we truly do not have results for it. The reason is because while we do those things, the truth is there is plan B. The plan B is very diplomatic. When matters go bad, we can outsource plan. The jealousy of God does not allow you to have plan B. It is either you, O oh God, or I perish. It is either you lift me or I perish. Are you getting what I'm saying now? The Bible says the man left sorrowful. Sorrowful. Because he had great possessions. I would sell this. I would give this away. You know, you've heard me say it again. That if the Lord told me that this were my last time preaching as a man of God. I stand before the God of heaven and I tell you, I will drop this mic and never pick it again. Love. In the midst of plenty or outside of plenty, unchanged. Passion. In the midst of results or outside of results, doesn't make any difference. Oh God, why didn't you heal my mother? Are you really God? And he's looking at you. My CGPA, Lord, I gave my tithe. I'm a tither. And I even gave a seed to, to every man of God that I love. Yet things have not changed. Where are you, oh God? Take away shame from me. Don't let people laugh at me. And God says, that's it. People laugh at you. That's, that's really the object. When you get to a point where it no longer matters, why will you take the shame when you claim you are not taking the glory? Whoever takes the glory should take the shame. So if I claim he's taking the glory and yet I am so shame conscious, something is not adding up. Why is your reputation such an issue? Please listen to what I'm telling you. I show you a secret to becoming the friend of God. It is more than fasting. It is more than prayer. It is more than Bible study. It is coming to a point in your life where you are willing to lose any and everything and yet your passion for him is unchanged. Thank you because the job comes but if it never comes, leaving you is not an option. Thank you because I know you will heal my body but even if I die, the last word that will come out is you are faithful. Come on now. Our world, especially our generation, is full of interests. There is hardly the purity of selflessness. What is in it for me? You are my friend because... Are we together? I found out you, are, you know a lot of people. And so I've seen that there is an advantage in being your friend. 
provided I can see what I can gain from you. It's amazing how that our pursuits as spiritualist as it is has already been corrupted by the versatility of the lost tied to it. And so we go for seven days dry. What are you looking for? Lord, what did you give apostle? You will give me. And God starts asking why from day one. You never answer. Just send it to God. Why? Why do you want the power? I know why. Because you saw a protocol standing close to a man. Come. It looked good to have people stand. I mean, this huge guy. It looked good to be a celebrity. And you just found out that since I'm not an unbeliever, let me use God to achieve the same result. What is in it for me? The language of our generation. What is in it for me? What do I stand to gain? Show me my court first. And so we carry that bargaining mindset and go to God and say, Lord, I want to serve you, but first, oh, let's define it. Am I going to shine? If yes, more than who? Mention the people who will clap for me while I serve you. Because there are people I need to prove a point to. Will they be part of them? And while that is happening, we have the energy to dissipate. But the loss will never allow God to be glorified. Sell all you have. Take it away from yourself. Be dissociated from it. Don't go and store it. Every time in the Bible, a man built a monument and secured his life upon it, God called him a fool. There was once upon a time a rich man who built barns and put a lot of plenty. Please don't get me wrong. If you think God is not a giver, I will show you that there is a name the, the giving of God cannot be really received by any man. We don't have what it takes to receive all that he wants to give. So this is by no means promoting a life of mediocrity and failure. Look at those who gave him all. Every time people meet me, the number one prayer is apostle a double portion. And, and there's nothing wrong with that necessarily. I'm sure it comes from a sincere heart. Apostle, this and that. I'm sure some of you while watching a Fenatan minister in your mind, just say, I will dust that voice training again. I mean, if this is what it takes, I will go back. And, and you can discern the corruption. Let me tell you this, my brothers and my sisters. God is not a fool. He is the fountain of wisdom. He must vet the purity of your motive regardless of the accuracy of the activities. While you are doing those spiritual activities, the eye that can penetrate and cut asunder the bones and the marrows, he's watching to see. Can I trust you? If this is his phone, he should be able to collect it without me feeling offended. When I claim this is your phone and collecting it becomes a problem, then something is happening. I have taught again and again that owners are rebels in this kingdom. In this kingdom, we don't own things. When you own anything, you are a rebel. We are stewards, the Bible says. And it says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. The reputation his own, the glory his own, the fame, the lifting. Are we together? John chapter 3 and then verse 29 and 30. Something happened in the Bible. I hope you know that most of the disciples of John became the disciples of Jesus. The disciples of Jesus were formally mentored by John. And when Jesus came, I mean, he was, he was doing a lot. Let, let's start from 28. And some of the loyal disciples who were left were angry. And they said, something is happening here. John, Jesus is outshining you. Are you not concerned? 
We who are loyal, who have remained with you, fight Jesus, do something. And John replies, ye yourself bear me witness that I said, hmm, I am not the Christ, but I am sent before him. 29. He that had the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom which standeth and heareth him rejoiced greatly. Have you ever seen marriage? Come, husband and wife. Watch this. These people are about to get married. And then while they are joining them, the, uh, what they call that guy? The best man is taking the joining personal. That means we should suspect you. Your joy should be when they say we now declare you husband and wife but you are angry that your friend is about to rejoice something is wrong are you getting the scripture now yes please give it to us he said he rejoiced greatly because the of the bridegroom's voice this my joy ah, is therefore fulfilled may verse 30 become your heritage forever that he must increase but i must decrease let me tell you what decreasing means decreasing does not mean go down decreasing means that I shrink to a point that I am now in him that when they look at me you know the word decrease there for many of us it, we think is a bad word because we mean get out of the show that's truly what it means but then the advantage is that by the time you decrease God himself will find a way of ensuring that while they focus on him, they still see you. Are we together now? I must decrease. This is, please give us that scripture. This is a language that our generation does not like. We love the spotlight and there's nothing wrong with it. Except for the fact that we are so obsessed with fame and money and things that if it means kicking God out, let it be. I came from a background, you will say, where no one has celebrated me. Lord, this is my moment to shine. Wait outside. Let me enjoy my shining, then I come to you. Many of us came here tonight to receive power, wonderful. To receive miracles, wonderful. To be inspired, wonderful. But tonight God is searching for those who say, these are my reasons, oh God. But even if the reasons are never met, I am still here. Ah, I'm still here. I'm still here. I thought the breakthrough would have come by January. It didn't come, but I'm still here. Lord, I'm not going anywhere. To whom shall we go? You alone have the words of life. I don't have an option. I did not bring plan B when I started with you. It is you or I perish. These are the kinds of people that it will be as though God owes them his presence. They will call upon him and he will arise. He will adorn their lives with beauty and glory that will cause even them to wonder. Praise the Lord. Good master, what is the one thing that is left? You can fast the more. It's excellent. You can pray the more. Excellent. You can do all of the things you have to do the more. But my brothers and my sisters, let me tell you this. Please hear me. None of these things will replace the place of genuine death and dissociation from things. When honor and shame does not mean anything to you. When poverty and wealth does not mean anything to you. When the applauds of men or the mockings of men does not mean anything to you. When all that matters in your life is Christ and Christ alone, you are a dangerous man on the earth. You are the kind of person that Satan cannot do anything about. It is never about accolades. So when God sees that your pursuit is tied to those things, 
he will give you the same instruction he gave the man. Go. Sell that which gives you a sense of significance when you are left alone. Come back to me. Many people never come back. They never come back. They leave and they go to look for options. But like the one leper who was healed, there are others who will come back and say, Master, it's all gone. The reputation is gone. I am willing, if need be, to trade everything away. I stand before you only depending on your grace and your power and your light. If you do not help me, I cannot rise. Whatever you don't give me, I cannot have. If you don't give me a song, I cannot sing. If you don't open my eyes, I cannot see. And God says, do I mean that much to you? He said, Lord, let time prove it. Time prove it. Lord, I need a child greatly, but if a child does not come, you are still God. A time will come when your prayer life has no prayer points again. Not because you do not want to pray. You are more concerned about your love for him than your needs being met. That you can go before him and for hours never talk about yourself. It becomes all about him. Lord, I thank you. If you never bless me, you are still God. If you never open a door for me, you are still God. Please listen to what I tell you. Most people continue to use God as a ladder. You were told he's a reliable ladder to achieve greatness. You were told he's a reliable ladder to achieve fame. You are told he's a reliable ladder to marry. A reliable ladder to get a good husband, a good wife. A reliable ladder to get promotion. A reliable ladder to get these things. And you are right, he is. Except that that's not all he is. The Lord put it very strongly in my heart to challenge us tonight. You will waste your fasting. You will waste your prayer. You will waste your Bible study. You will waste your going to church. You will waste your going, your praying in tongues until your heart becomes like the alabaster box. That you carry your entire reputation and put it in that jar and take it to him. And not pour small and keep some for later. The Bible says she broke it. No hope of recovery. Broke it. And the entire perfume filled that room. And hear what the disciples who were there for reasons that they explained later on. What is our court in this following you? They were angry and they said, Madam, you are wasting this before him. And then they said you would have given it to the poor. Now lay it all down again. To hear you say that I'm your friend. Help me find a way. Bring me back to you. is what you must sell tonight the one thing I can give God everything except my job I can give God everything except my husband I can give God everything except my anointing I can give God everything except my ministry I can give God everything except my bank account ah, no, not 2019 not my bank account I can give God everything except my CGPA I can give God everything 
except my self-worth. It took me so long to build this. He had great possession. He said, go and sell it. Until you have nothing, come to me. Follow me. Follow me. Please hear me. Nobody follows God full. He will empty you on that journey. No matter how you start, he will empty you. He will empty you of your reputation. He will empty you of your intelligence. He will bring you to a point where in your world there is only one name, Jesus. There is only one destiny, God. He becomes Alpha. He becomes Omega. That everything around your life will revolve around him. Most of the sicknesses we have in the world today are caused because we have not laid down everything. I bought a car. I'm afraid they may steal it. I worry myself to depression because I think my car of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 million. I have a business and I'm not going to let anybody cheat me. It's my sweat. And so I wake up while the keeper of Israel is still awake too. And I depress myself to sleep. My ministry must move forward. Whether God gives me a song or not, I must compose one by myself. And you join things that you waste money and go to the studio and nobody celebrates it. I can tell you where our frustrations come from. They come from the lusts that are connected to our pursuits, even our pursuits of God. There is a loss connected to it and so when it is not satisfied, the lifespan of our passion diminishes completely. People send me a text, uh, send me text messages all the time and sometimes they say, Apostle, since God hears you talk to him, this thing, if it does not work, whatever he sees, he should take it. On the throne, I got to a point in my life where I said, Lord, I thank you for what you have made me represent to a generation. But I mean it and I mean it from the depth of my heart. That God alone is worth my life. No, not fame. Joshua Selman is only a man. A man that God has helped. When your reputation becomes bigger than you're promoting him, when your business becomes greater than your pro, when you are afraid of decreasing because you suspect that the honor will diminish, you suspect that the applause will diminish, then it will. But when he is lifted, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, this piece of earth, not real estate, if I be lifted up, that if you project men that when they see you, they see him. I should be able to look at you and see Christ and say, look at what God can do with a man. Not look at what man is doing with God. Look at what God can do with a man. These are the kinds of states that will make God swear over your life that you will never go down. For, for no reason, you will see God continue to lift you. And even you will try to find a reason and say, Lord, God will take someone's prayer request and give it to you as a gift. While someone is laboring on one side, your passion becomes a system of attraction. I've pledged and I've vowed in my life that anything that will ever come into this life that cannot be taken back by God should never come. Never. Never. And I mean it from the depth of my heart. Even as I'm standing here, I'm telling him again and he's hearing it. If this supposed reputation, all of these mundane things that continue to destroy our lives, please hear me my brothers and my sisters. Indoctrinate yourself into prioritizing God more than any other thing. Otherwise, you will make a fool out of your life. This lifetime is too small to be foolish. You must know what matters. In the beginning, 
God. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. And at the end of it, it must be God too. Alpha, Omega. Is God helping us tonight? That's why when, when Minister Ephel was ministering, I, just, I, was, I was praying in my heart and I said, Lord, let, let, let this open up our hearts and our lusts. You see, when God comes, one of the things that he does is to expose you to you. He will show you the truth. You will then see your lusts and your vulnerabilities. Not to condemn you, but to let you know that, listen, listen, the object behind this, your spirituality, is a corrupted motive. It's not all of me. I love him. I truly do. I love him. But he will ask you more than what? More than what? I love you more than what? And whatever you say you love him more than, you will test it. He really will. It's an uncomfortable truth, but he will test it until he finds himself Tonight's message is very simple. It's a call. A call to a deeper dimension. A call to dissociate yourself from all the things that we build our reputation over. When he becomes the only object of your focus, then sit back and watch lifting that you have never seen. Sit back and watch the power of God upon your life in a way and manner that will scare you sit back and watch your life mentor generations when he finds you when God searches for a man he's not searching for a body he's searching for your heart my son give me your heart the epicenter where you store those desires give it to me from beginning to the end it will always be it's always been you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, nothing else matters. Nothing in this world will do. It's not a song, it's a confession that Jesus, you're the center, and everything falls around you Jesus you. this must be the anthem of a generation so from my heart to the heavens Jesus be the center it's all about you yes it's all about you from my heart to the All about you, yes, it's all about you. Tonight, I want you to bring out your alabaster box. Take your reputation and pour it like an offering into that box. Take your job that is the basis for your no time, no time. Pour it in that alabaster box. Also add your pain. Anything is allowed to enter. Take your sickness. Take the source of your discomfort. Turn everything into that alabaster box. And bring it before his feet. And break both the crowns and the thorns. Break it before his feet. And tell him this is all about you. I continue to search my life every time to be sure nothing under any condition has been able to gain his place in my life. And, and I mean what I'm saying. Please, I want, you to, I want you to discern the truthfulness from whence I'm communicating this. This is not just a sermon. It's a call. It's a call. God is waking us up to say, hey, be careful. Be careful. Your prayer requests continue to increase and your passion decreases. God, give me this. God, make me this. I must have this. 
I've had this one, add this for me. And God is saying, look, there must come a time in your life when you throw your prayer request and say, Lord, where are you? Where are you? Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. And while you are singing that, a text just comes. Sorry, you were not given the job. And you add that text into the alabaster box. If it's not in your presence, if it's not by your hand if it's not by your spirit don't let me have it for everything i need truly if it's not in your presence let men talk they will talk anyway if it's not by your hand And if it's not by your spirit, don't let me have it. For everything I need is in you. And then the medical report comes. You just lost the baby, madam. You thought the eleventh pregnancy will be the last one. You had a vision that it became a baby. And now the pregnancy is lost. And you're standing there wondering what to do. They've prophesied. They've said this. Lord, where are you? Ah. Come and make my heart your home. Come and be everything I am and all I know. Here's the prayer. Listen. Search me through and through till my heart becomes a home for you. There's no space in my heart to keep a car. There's no space in my house to keep money, dollars, pounds. There's no space in my heart. My heart is too fragile for those objects. There's no space in my heart to keep ego. It was designed to carry the weight and the size of God. Tonight we are going to take a lot of things out. A lot of things. Efe taught us the song already. Let every other name fade away. Hold on. Do you know your car has a name? Both the one you bought and the one you are looking at. There is a name to it. I hope you know that the bank account you want or have has a name. When you say let every other name, don't think demons this night. Just, just leave them. Tomorrow is their day. But this night, let every other name may be the name of a beautiful lady who can even be here listen let every other name can be the name of an area where you must build a house if not i die let every other name can be the name of a wevon that must must be upon your head so when you say let every other name fade away you are not saying it should leave you. You are saying, I, I want my focus to be directed on just one person. One person. Why will I look at you, dear Lord, and look at something else? Why will I talk to two things at the same time? I'm talking to you and talking to my car. I'm talking to you and talking to my ego. You want my undivided attention. Your jealousy will not allow me to be that distracted. It is either you or nothing else. 
Let every other name fade away. Let every other name fade away. Till there's only you. Jesus take your place. Jesus take your place. Sing it one more time from the depth of your heart. Let every other name fade away. Let every other name fade away. Till there's only you. Let every other name Listen, my brothers and my sisters, in your mind tonight, you're going to carry your ATM and put it on the ground. Carry your CGPA, your results, place it on the ground. Like the 20 and 4 elders, you will take your golden crown. I know you just got promoted, but it must touch the ground. If your promotion cannot touch the ground, then it should be on a throne because that is your God. It is either on the throne or on the ground. When it comes to worship, nothing else. There, there are no two sides. The elders don't just remove their crown. They cast it. I cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before your glorious majesty. I cast my crown before him, the highest royalty. I am undone before majesty. Now let me share with you a mystery as we round up. Everything that you put on the ground, the moment you start worshiping, it grows too. There is nothing that is on the ground that was a representation of your worth and your value that remains the same. When you drop your bank account, while you worship, it grows. When they brought the rod of Aaron and they kept it in his presence, the rod that had no root, something began to happen. It began to grow and bud. I tell you how to fix what is not working. Lay it down. Lay it down. Lay it down. Carry your finances and lay it down. Carry your past and lay it down. Carry your CGP and lay it down. Carry your ministry and lay it down. And then worship. Worship pain out of your life. Worship tears out of your life. Worship disappointment out of your life and say, Lord, this is about you now. It is no longer about all of these things. No. I show you a secret. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. There is only one celebrity that stands in your room of worship, the Christ himself. And as you lift that incense of worship, suddenly you will find out that the things you would have focused on are no longer there. You have been detached. Now listen. When, do you know why you feel safe depositing your money in a bank? You're not friends with the manager. You may not even know your account officer. I will tell you why because of the ease of withdrawal say after me ease of withdrawal i know that if i put one million in so 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 and so bank even if it is 12 midnight when i come under normal circumstances as soon as i slot my card it should come so could there be a reason why it is difficult for god to reach down to you because you have not become like that atm when it is the same thing when God is on his throne or when he's in your heart, then there is nothing, whatever is on the throne can also come to your heart. When the greatness on the throne can be safe in your heart and it all belongs to him, then let me tell you sincerely, 
the the entire affluence and glory on the throne can be reproduced in your heart because either ways he still has unlimited access to it i can slot my atm card this night and punch some amount and it comes out can god come to your life punch that car will it go some of you will say wrong number. God says me. Say, I'm, I, I know what I'm saying. Put a lower figure and it will come out. Ah. Lord, whatever I cannot give you, please may it not come to my life. Whatever realm and dimension you will take me to that you will not be glorified, may I never get there. Let me tell you the truth. The uploads of men don't last. It is too short to waste your time around it. Tonight, many of us are like the man who came to Jesus. You have done everything right. It may not be that you have done everything wrong, but the one thing that must happen tonight before we leave, the one thing, our lusts our desires they don't have to be demonic but god fights anything that takes his place even if he's the one that gave you the moment it finds its way to your heart it becomes his enemy god can give you something today and fight it tomorrow don't you think because he gave you he would not touch it he gave isaac and he called for it again and abraham took isaac and he said because you have done this i swear that in blessing i will bless you does god have the power to shut down your business <laughs> does god have the power to relocate you to where he wants not greener pastures does God have the power to keep you in a room for three days with no excuses? Does God have the right to cancel your ministerial schedule? Does God have the power over your account? Does God have the power over your relationship? Does God have the power over your ego and your reputation? Tonight, the part you have not given God is the part he wants this night. He doesn't want what you have given him before. He's looking for the one thing you have not given him. And I'm telling you, my brothers and my sisters, true freedom in your life will come when that happens. Are we together? We're going to pray the next five minutes and then we're done. It's going to be a prayer of surrender. Just five minutes and we're done tonight's service. We have to start tonight is a call. I don't know how you are going to pray. I don't know what position you will find, but I like us to pray and say, Lord, these lusts and these appetites must leave my life this night. I'm tired of acting like it's all about you. I know, I know in truth that it's not entirely about you. It is you plus my desires. It is you plus marriage. It is you plus a job. It is you plus promotion. Tonight, I want it to be you and you alone. Five minutes and we're done. Everywhere, inside and outside, cry to God. You are my God. Please pray. My hiding place my safe refuge my treasure lord you are my friend and king anointed one most holy what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole reputation? What shall it profit a man 
if you gain the whole world and lose your soul he said simon bajona lovest thou me more than these i know you love me more than these oh god you are my god and i will ever serve you oh god you are my God And I will ever follow Oh God You are my God And I will ever love you I will seek you in the morning I have learned to walk in your ways It's step by step you are leading me and I will follow you all of my days Sasaki Buchi Yeah for you alone are worthy of my praise I lay everything down oh God one minute and we're done let it be yours Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours forever. Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing. Keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.